Okay, so hi folks, this is really a new um, era for me, trying to do my, what's become my Friday sermon, um, and everything we would normally do in shul together on Shabbos morning, um, doing it now for you. Um, obviously, please watch it before Shabbos, and hopefully we'll try to do all the things we would do on Shabbos, and hopefully this will keep everyone going through the next 25 hours. Um, so first of all, uh, Erev Shabbat Shalom, I guess, a good Erev Shabbos to everybody. It's Friday afternoon. We're all preparing for a very unusual Shabbat. Um, normally we would say prayers for those who are unwell in shul, We'd say prayers for the Yotzeit, we'd wish Mazel Tov. Um, we're still getting our system in place, so right now it's a case of um, just wishing Mazel Tov to all those with celebrations, and we apologize for not naming you. Um, next week, hopefully, we'll have a system in place. Um, I do have the yacht site list, and we're just going to wish long life now to all those with the yacht site. And um, I'm going to say a memorial prayer, and then I'll continue with my sermon. Um, so we wish long life to the following have yacht site this week. Tomorrow, Shabbos, Alan Lewis for his mother, and Andrew Rosenfeld for her mother. On Sunday, Philippa Brewer for her mother, Amanda Clip for her brother, Barbara Lasher for her mother, Deborah Michaels for her mother, and Roy Phillips for his mother. On Monday, Judy Barwin for her father, and Amanda Clip for her mother. On Tuesday, David Fertig for his brother, Beverly Richards for her father, and Henry Shelkin for his father. On Wednesday, Irving Estrin for his father, Deborah Michaels again for her father, Sharon Mullish for her father, Helen Prager for her father, David Rose for his mother, Jeff Rosenberg for his mother, and Stephen Zeffi for his father. On Thursday, Paula Saffer for her mother, and on Friday, Sally Kaplan for her father, Reva Cohen for her brother, Rena Don, Rene Don for her mother, Philip Lester for his father, and Rachel Mockton for her mother. So um, we'll say a memorial prayer now for all those who have your type for the names. <laughs> The Malois Kadoshim Tarim, Kazariki Amazirim, Es Nishmas, Hana Razor Bas Moshe Zelman, Vies Cyril Bashmul Fivel, Vies Yaakov Ben David, Vies Chaya Bas Malka, Vies Bela Bas Sora, Vies Shia Ben Yaakov, Vies Pesha Bas Pinchas, Vies Yosef Ben Aaron Alevi, Vies Herschel Ben Boruch, Vies Avram Ben Moshe, Vies Yosef Meir Ben Shlomo Yitzhak Alevi, Vies Shmuel Ben Zalman, Vies Toba Bas Maya, Vies Vega Rocha Bas Chasko, Ves Rosa Bas Tevia, Ves Tzvi Ben Shmuel, Ves Aaron Yaakov Ben Avram Michael, Ves Peral Bas Eliezer, Ves Tov Ben Shraga Fai Vala Levi, Ves Yudis Vega Bas Naftali Zeva Koen Shalchu Loi Lamam, Hana Vala Rachimim, Yasirim Beseisek, Anav Avni Oi Lamim, Yitro Betachai Mez Nishmasam, Adin Oi Nach Lasam, Inucho Beshlam Mishkvay Sam, Ben Oi Mar, Amen. Wish you all long life, those observing Yotzeit this week. Um, I'm standing here in an empty shawl. I'm reminded of the very bad joke, but why should you miss out on bad jokes just because we're not in shawl? Um, about the fellow who has to play golf on Shabbos, but he feels bad missing the sermon. So he hides, uh, in those days it was a tape recorder, in the back of the shawl in his seat, and he leaves it on before Shabbos, and that way he figures, I'll be able to record the rabbi's sermon, I can listen to it during the week. And of course, nothing happens without people noticing, so soon all his friends notice, and they get the same idea. And before long, the rabbi, instead of having a shawl full of people, has a shawl full of tape recorders all set before Shabbos. And finally, the rabbi thinks, you know, what the heck, if everyone else is going to do this, I'll do it too. So he records his sermon, and he sets it up to play. And now you have the rabbi's tape recorder, which is playing a sermon being recorded by a hundred other tape recorders, and there's nobody in shawl. And this apparently was the first ever recorded instance of artificial insermonization. Boom, boom. Unfortunately, our shawl is going to be like that this week, along with shawls around the world of all shapes and sizes and stripes. It is an unbelievable challenge to close the doors of a shawl. I myself felt very bereft this week as we held our last service for the foreseeable future. But there are parallels. Lubavitcher Rebbe spoke about the fact that during the Shoah, Jews were hunted down with hatred, and that the only antidote to that is to reach out far and wide with love. I saw a quote that said that whereas normally when shuls were closed in the past, it was because of hate and fear and persecution, 
Shuls are closing this week because of love, love for human life and a care to make sure that we all stay safe. And as difficult as it is, the same God that told us we have to pray in a minion also told us that we have to stay safe. And if that means praying at home, we have to pray at home. We find the idea in, same idea in this week's Sedra, which unbelievably perhaps talks about gathering together. This week's Sedra is Vayak al starts off with Moshe gathering the children of Israel, and in fact also talking about the Shabbat, about Shabbos. And it comes in the wake of another gathering, the gathering of the people when they brought their gold and donated it to make the golden calf the other week. And now Moshe comes down from the mountain, you have a people who are demoralized, they've had the golden calf, which would have repercussions for generations, um, everything has changed, and now what does Moshe do? Rather than saying, you know, I won't gather people together, because when they gather together, they cause trouble and they make golden calves. He says, I'll gather them together. Not only that, but I'll ask them to donate their gold. But this time, rather than donating it for an idol, they will donate it for the Mishkan, for the sanctuary. And so successful was Moshe with his plea. It's the first time and probably last time in history that an appeal was shut down because there was too much money. Moshe had to say to the people, stop bringing your gold. I have too much gold. Such a successful fundraising effort it was. And it's no coincidence that the Mishkan, the tabernacle, the first place of resting of the divine presence, the first physical place we find, which will later give way to the temple, which kept us going for so many years, that when the Torah refers to that, it uses this very curious phrase, the Osuli Mikdash, you shall make for me, they shall make for me, a sanctuary, v'shochanti v'socham, and I will dwell within them. Then Rashi says it doesn't say within the sanctuary, but within them, within each and every Jew. This is very pertinent to us now. We may not have the physical sanctuary of our shawls, but we have the ability to bring God, to bring that holiness into every aspect of our lives. Now more than ever, we're reminded of the centrality of the home and the family to Jewish life and the community. We don't have our shawls to fall back upon, so we have to instead create it for ourselves in our homes. And that's how God dwells amongst us, not just in the physical Mishkan or the physical temple, but in each and every one of our homes and each and every one of our lives. And Moshe very bravely took this negative idea of giving gold for the calf and he turned it around into something positive. The people gathered together and they gathered for a good purpose. You know, often when we talk about Minyan, we say, where do we learn Minyan from? So it was used to joke that it says that when God wanted to destroy Saddam and Gomorrah, that he, Avram said, if I can find ten righteous people in this city, don't destroy it. And this we learn a minion from. But Avram never said in the same place. So I used to joke that we have a minion of people, just not all gathered in the same place at the same time for Davening. Now that will be true. We may well hopefully have at least a minion, but we won't be in the same physical space. We will be spread out physically, but not in spirit. It's also no accident that the additional reading which we would have read today, uh, tomorrow rather, is the mitzvah, the very first mitzvah we're given as a nation, which is the mitzvah of Kiddush HaChodesh, of marking time. Time is so important in the Judaism. Never understand why we're always late for things. Time is crucial. In the Megillah it says when the king consulted his Chachamim, Yodei Ha'itim, the people who knew how to tell the time and work out the calendar, the commentaries say that was the Jewish people. We've always been obsessed with time. Time is so important. If anyone watched Lord Sex, he put it very beautifully last night. You have time and space. Our space is being challenged now. We don't have the same space, but we still have the same time. There is a beautiful idea that if you can't daven with the minion, you at least daven at the same time that people are davening. We will all sit down to Friday night dinner and kiddish tonight. We can all daven together tomorrow morning in our community. We daven at 9.30 so we can start. And some of us actually won't have the challenges we may have had in the past. Unfortunately, the things that held us back, um, whether it's work or school or play, we find ourselves stuck at home. Could be a good opportunity to start davening at 9.30. And we'll all daven together in the same time frame, if not in the same space. We're hoping this week to launch online davening every day as well so that we can join together in time and in virtual space. It's so important to stay connected. Please look at our website before Shabbos. We've put various resources. You can print out the parasha. You can print out some articles and inspiration. Um, We'll be posting the Sedra synopsis video. Look at all of that and use that to make your Shabbos at home very special. 
It's going to be very challenging. Pesach is going to be even more challenging. People don't necessarily go to a Seder because they need mats and wine. They go for company. And we're going to find that the most vulnerable amongst us are very challenged this Pesach. We are looking at ways to at least make food available to people. We're going to be cooking meals in our shul, which we can distribute. Um, we've got people who can help people with shopping. We've got all kinds of things going on. Please be in touch. There'll be information going up on our website and going out by email this week. Please be in touch if you know somebody in need. The one positive aspect of the gathering that has taken place this week is not a physical gathering in our shuls, but it is a spiritual gathering that connects us together. The outpouring of chesed and kindness and love around the world has been unbelievable. I've seen it in our Jewish community, so many groups coming forward to help. And in the wider community as well, I'm on a local WhatsApp group for church fields and people are just coming out of the woodwork and offering help and support to one another in an incredible way. So the one lesson comes out of this terrible tragedy is it reminds us about face-to-face -face connection with our neighbors, with our families and with our community. And that's going to be so important. Vayakel doesn't just mean gathering in shul. It means gathering together as a community and staying connected. And we will invoke that Dunkirk spirit. As I saw somebody put, you know, our grandparents were asked to go to the trenches. Um, we're being asked to wash our hands and sit at home on the sofa. I think we can manage that. That's a slight oversimplification, um, but just gives a perspective, at least for those of us who are able and young and low risk, that we can see what we can do to help others and not sit and kvetch. Um, we will come through this, both as a nation in Britain and as a Jewish community. We are incredibly strong. We are connected. We have our families and our communities and those who don't have those connections, please get in touch. We'll make sure you have that support. And if you know someone who's not watching this because they're not online, please also put them in touch with us by phone or they can write to us or we can try to somehow be in touch with them, make sure they're okay and they get the support that they need. It's, this is an evolving process. But in the meantime, this Friday sermon looks like it'll become a regular thing, hopefully for not too long. And I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. Make the most of the opportunity to have a real rest, to have time at home with yourselves and your families and to reconnect. And let's daven tonight. You can go to the United Synagogue Facebook page at five o'clock. There'll be Kabbalat Shabbat before Shabbos. And let's daven together wherever we may be tomorrow morning at 9.30 like we normally do. And have a L'chaim, say Kiddush afterwards. And just let's connect as much as we can, even as we are unfortunately separated. It's going to be very strange, but we as a people always manage to adapt and we will adapt to this. I wish everyone you should stay safe and well. All those who are unwell should have a refush lema, an instant speedy recovery from illness. And the world in general should have peace and tranquility and harmony. Something big is clearly happening and we can only hope that it becomes clear to us what this is all about and it should be something positive and hopefully it's the ultimate positivity when the world will know peace and harmony and no more strife and godliness will be everywhere with the coming of Mashiach with peace and good health and tranquility and none of the sorrows that we're going through right now. May all of our prayers be answered. May we all have a peaceful and a safe Shabbos. I wish everyone Shabbat Shalom and a good week ahead. We will be in touch again early next week.